Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at yet another vintage integrated circuit and that's the bus transceiver. Now these things are used in quite a lot of uh, circuits so let's start by having a look at what the theory is about a bus transceiver, how it works and the one that we're going to be playing with on the bench today. Okay let's start by looking at um, what we might find inside a bus transceiver and essentially what we're going to find is this type of gate which is a buffer um, sort of looks a bit like an inverter but without the little uh, circle and the output showing inversion occurs so in the case of this gate um, if we've got out input A and output O the truth table is um, when A is 0, O is 0 and when A is 1, O is 1 so it changes nothing which might seem a little bit odd um, what it does do however is it acts as a driver so if you've got some logic um, that's busy doing all sorts of things being fed into that um, it effectively isolates the those uh, bits of uh, preceding circuit from the output so it allows you to to drive things and I have certainly in, uh, uh, one uh, bit of text that I read about uh, transceivers it suggested it was the um, the power amplifier of the digital world it was able to um, uh, drive uh, several things at the far side so um, that's the general arrangement let's now have a look at um, an example of that that we're going to um, be playing with today and that's um, the 74 in my case LS but probably these days you'll be buying the HC 245 which is an octal bus transceiver the National Semiconductor Data Sheet has this diagram and uh, it's a little confusing in the sense that there's a lot of repetition because apart from the control circuitry on the left uh, everything from A1 to A8 or B1 to B8 if you like uh, is just repetition so I think the TI data sheet is uh, more useful for looking at the operation so the TI data sheet um, just shows you one of the transceivers and we've got um, first thing to note at the top we've got a couple of AND gates that have got inverters on the inputs and on some of the inputs and then we've got um, two uh, transceiver circuits or two, two drivers if you like and in the case of the 245 these are Schmidt triggers hence the symbol in the middle of the, the gates there um, which again gives you a much more um, uh, what's the phrase I might use um, a more emphatic uh, change of level shall it's probably a reasonable way to say it so essentially two control inputs we've got on the left hand top side there pin 1 we've got direction and on the right hand side at the top on pin 19 we've got uh, output enable both of these um, are uh, well pin 19 uh, enables when it's low and uh, direction uh, when it's low drives A to B and when it's high it drives B to A so the difference between these gates and the simplistic gate that we looked at just now is that these gates have got a, a control input and the other thing that um, bus transceivers are capable of doing is what's sometimes called tri-state logic so in tri-state logic we've got low and we've got high in exactly the same way but if we um, either disable the outputs by taking pin high 19 or we change the direction we go to a third state um, which is often called high z or high impedance and the purpose of that state is it's neither low nor high but the impedance is so high that the impact on other parts of the circuit is um, uh, so small as to be insignificant so in other words when it's in high z state it, it places uh, no lo load on other parts of the circuit it sort of almost doesn't exist so that's one of the handy uh, uses of a bus transceiver you can effectively isolate one part of a circuit from another and stop it having uh, any impact at all right let's play with one of these I'm not going to do a, a circuit diagram because uh, quite frankly it's such a straightforward circuit let's just look at a uh, picture of the breadboard here so there's the chip in the middle um, and at the top I've got eight lines coming in and these are coming in from the uh, from the a couple of binary counters you've seen me using in previous videos and I just want to be able to provide eight data lines uh, and they're coming into 
um, side A. On side B I've got uh, four lines going to four LEDs just to repeat what's going on so we can see that it is indeed passing it through and that black line above the LEDs is um, a resistor pack uh, which is just a number of resistors in line just makes life a little bit easier and also it's good practice um, on the unused outputs um, which are actually side B um, 5 to 8 uh, I've got another resistor pack just off to the um, left hand side in the centre there which just um, uh, holds them above uh, above uh, the zero rail through a resistance. So that's the circuit. Um, two push button switches um, and they are output enable and direction. Now both of those inputs normally active low so I've got a couple of 10k resistors there pulling um, both of those low so normally the output will be enabled and normally the direction will be A to B but pressing either of those buttons takes those inputs higher and we can, uh, we can see the effect of those. So let's uh, go to the bench and have a look at this circuit in action. OK, here's the breadboard as you've just seen on the slides. Uh, 74LS245 is here. That's side A with eight inputs coming from the uh, 191 binary counters that you've seen in previous videos. Um, there is a video about those if you want to check it out. And then I've got the first four LEDs here repeated here the opposite side of the uh, the buffer and then the last four lines I've got to connect it to some some load resistors here uh, these are just little um, inline resistor packs just to save me putting up uh, loads of resistors so here we've got the direction so currently um, that's been pulled low here which means it's going from A to B and the output enable is pulled low which means that the sorry the output enable is pulled low which means that um, output is indeed enabled so what will come out will be either logic state uh, uh, 0 or 1 so let's now start the um, signal generator and put some uh, data through these counters so we've got the four bits here you can hopefully see being repeated here And obviously the top four bits I'm not repeating, they're just going to resist us. So let's now um, see what happens when we take the output enable high. Uh, that should stop these LEDs flashing at all. Won't have any effect on these because they're being driven from over here. So output enable low, now high. And as you can see, LEDs have gone out as you would expect. Now the direction um, pin currently pulled low. If I take it high, uh, it appears to have the same effect as the output enable. In reality, what I've now done is connected B to A. Um, so we'll have a look how uh, that works uh, in a moment. Okay, one of the things that um, is mentioned in the spec is the um, propagation delay. In other words, the time it takes to get from uh, one port to the other. So I've taken away all the unnecessary stuff now. I've got all the uh, inputs and outputs um, uh, with uh, uh, these resistors to ground apart from channel 1 and I've got the input from the signal generator coming in here uh, I've got output to the yellow trace on the scope here and then I've also got um, we can see the LED flash in there which is currently at a speed of 6 Hertz um, and I've got uh, channel 2 on the scope attached here so let's go up to a slightly more sensible um, speed which you won't be able to see on the flashing LED. So let's go to um, let's go to 200 kilohertz, and then let's have a look at the scope trace. Okay, here's the scope trace um, for 200 kilohertz, and that's what's going in. Um, so let's turn on channel two, and you can see there's the output. Um, notice it tubes high at the top, but I'm not too concerned about the noise really at the moment. But you can see that. Um, uh, output is, is tracking input or thereabouts but let's now um, adjust the time base until we've got till we can actually see this this rising edge here and I'm going to stop at well I'm going to stop at 10 nanoseconds there and then we'll pop on some cursors and I'm going to move I'm going to move the first cursor Whoops! across 
So I'm just picking up that centre line where the where the wave crosses on from the input channel. That's the yellow trace. And now I'm bringing the other cursor across. And uh, don't know whether you can see that, but that's saying delta is 10.6. Uh, nanoseconds so okay you can argue about where I choose to measure that it would be slightly different nearer the top but just for a, a crude test on a breadboard here at 100 kilohertz uh, that is indeed um, meeting the, the specification which I think is about um, off the top of me at 12 nanoseconds and if I up the frequency here to so I'm going to go right up it won't be very obvious there but that's now one megahertz and there's no change at all on that display. Uh, in fact, you can see it changing there if you want. And I don't know how high this will actually go, but um, let's see if we can get up to. That's yeah, it's not uh, this noise on the breadboard at that kind of frequency. That's seven megahertz. Okay, you're getting some distortions in the in the wave, but what you can see is that the um, let's stick it. Um, 4 megahertz there so at 4 megahertz again that propagation delay holding fairly steady about yeah about 10.6 maybe maybe ever so slightly more I'm not I'm looking slightly at the screen 11 nanoseconds so yeah it more than meets its um, specification there um, considering this is a very crude and noisy setup on the breadboard Here's a, an application example then, and I appreciate that in, in some senses this is ancient history, but uh, it's quite a nice example because this bit of circuitry actually contains uh, two types of bus transceiver. It contains the 244 at the top and the 245 below. So this is uh, a little bit of circuitry from the BBC microcomputer from the 80s, and this is the uh, 1 megahertz bus. So. Um, at the top there we've got IC71 which is the, um, the LS244. Now that is indeed a driver but it's unidirectional and you can see that the address lines A0 to A7 are fed into it and just go straight out onto the um, 1 megahertz bus and pins 1 and 19 at the bottom of the chip are both tied low and if we just have a quick look at the internal circuitry of a 244 um, We've got essentially those eight Schmidt trigger buffers, um, although interestingly these are inverters, um, so they will present the inverse of the output. But presumably that's been um, accounted for in the in the rest of the circuitry in the BBC micro. We don't need to concern ourselves with that here. But pins one and nineteen uh, just contain um, an enable, disable, and it's possible to disable or enable two halves of the chip as appropriate but in the case of this example they're both tied low because they, they want it to be permanently on. But the 74LS245 which is what we've just been looking at and concerns us here um, is set up there with data lines D0 to D7 they go come in from the right and go out on the uh, 1 megahertz port on the left and uh, you can hopefully see that the chip enable is on pin 19 is connected to some logic but then we've got the read write input going into to pin 1 and that's not only is that available um, for the processor to control it's also available on the 1 megahertz bus for the um, peripheral whatever it is to also take control so we've got a bi-directional uh, data buffer there which allows um, the BBC micro to isolate itself from the peripheral or to allow the peripheral to isolate itself from um, BBC Micro. So, nice little example. Hope that makes some sense. Yes, it's ancient history, but I enjoyed it. Okay, well that's a, a quick look at the 74LS245 bus transceiver. Hope you found it useful. If you've really been paying attention, you've spotted that I've managed to miss out the bit about the bidirectionalness. That's because I've managed to mislay the footage and I'd already stripped the breadboard down before I uh, got to the point of realising I'd no longer got the footage. So forgive me for being so lazy that I wouldn't rebuild it again, but hey, you know, um, that's it. These videos are free, so um, you get what you get, I'm afraid. Thanks very much for watching. Hope it's been useful. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.